Cream! Cream! But I'm John Deere, day hard. But yeah, the deer, I think now. There'll be men argue, and I don't care, because I'll argue why. So, where are you from back home? Tyrone. County of Tyrone, up in the north. Uh, how how did you find yourself out here? Uh, I was through another fella that had been out here a couple of years. I'd sort of hit him up about it, and he recommended to come to Homes and Chittick. And I, the rest is history. I made the call and got the flight, and everyone home. Uh, how long goes that? Five years, 2017. Never left. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. Well, you're over and back to America every yeah. winter. Yeah, I've been over and back and forth there three times. But yeah, I keep coming back here for some reason. I'm getting a bit of new machinery now. Yeah. They are debate. When did you get this machine? Eh, 2021. We got it in September. It's done two grass and this is second maze. On. No issues. Run well. Very happy with it. And what hours are on it since you have it now? Just clicking 1500 hours now. So it has done well. Very yeah. trouble free. So. And you're running a 10 row maze ten row. Maze head, 475 plus. Basically a camper, only yellow. Cuts off real well. Loves flat stuff, which we have plenty of it this year. Yeah, the side yeah. <laughs> you just need good patience. What other gear are you running here at Homes and Chittick? John Deere tractors, Heron trailers. We have a few fan tractors, McHale balers, JCB loaders. We have two class harvesters. Oh! Ah, I don't know, that's bad, that's bad. <laughs> uh, they're all out at Mayas, but then at Durham Grass, we put a set of triple mowers on the front of one of them, on a 950. And then that leaves us two choppers for grass. Yeah, all class machinery, really. Mowers, rakes. Everything Green Line is class. Everything Green Line is class. Basically. How many choppers would you run at Mayas when it's busy? Would you run the three? three. Run three. Yeah. The two crews of tractors and a crew of trucks. See, so if John Deere, you fend. From now on, are all the choppers going to be John Deere? I hope so. If I have any say, they'll definitely be John Deere. Well, I heard you're the boss around here now, so... More or less, you may as well say I am. I maybe appointed myself the boss. How did Heron Trailers come about? We had got one on demo way back uh, when I first started on a Donnelly. And they're impressed by both of them. The Heron was sort of yeah, coming out in top strength and all that. And they got a real good deal on three trailers in yeah. one go. And then we bought a, our fourth one then the following year come second hand but yeah can't beat them really to be honest good way tires hold a good load yeah and touch wood they've never heard any well they haven't been on their wheels uh, or never none of them ever nah the fourth trailer we bought it was second hand that had been on its side previously. which is common enough over here really especially in the north island aye it's hilly yeah it's hilly you know <laughs> not today no uh, not, not today. today today is cream this yeah. is flat as flat <laughs> uh, but yeah no the herons great job Absolutely great job, but expensive. Yeah. Real expensive, just like New Zealand. Everything over here is dear, like. It is. You're on a crew of trucks. Are they your own trucks? Or are they hired in? Subbies, all hired in. Yeah. We have one truck of our own, but everybody else is hired in. And that'll either be trucks and maybe some truck and trailers this year. Wait and see. The tractor's nearly as quick. Yeah, yeah. There'll be five minutes of difference. Depends on the draw, like. Depends on the draw, but a tractor will stay 50k the whole time. Trucks up and down, corners, road ends. Tractor and trailer, I think, is nearly everybody's good. Are you cutting a lot of maize that's been traded, we'll say? Probably, I would say, 40 or 50% of it would be traded. But a lot of it's on farm for farmers. They'll grow, you know, four or five hectares. Or, or some of them grow up to 20, even 30. So you wouldn't have a long draw then, like? Nah, short draw, two trailers or three trailers. Yeah. And you bend out, you do a couple of farmers in the day if you hit it right. Depends on the ground and... With homes in Chittick, then you planting maize and doing full contracts and all that kind of stuff. Everything. We have a company comes in, two companies does all the spraying. They come in and then we do everything after that. We work closely with Pioneer that supplies seed and coursing as well. But yeah, we do everything right through. I see here today you're weighing every load that goes out. Yep. So do you do it all the time or only if it's if off it's farm? It's if it's traded, it has to be weighed. And then you're taking samples and all every, that stuff as well? Every load sampled and then. Oh, say it's 20 hectares, we'll do a big sample every five hectares. Yeah. And then that's sent away, your moisture, dry matter, and then we work out the tons and stuff. And would you be taking data from the harvest lab? Or? Yeah, we take a lot of data from the harvest lab, and today I'm running another uh, computer monitor in there for this farmer. He's a grower, and he's on a Trimble system, and he has his own computer in there as well for real time. Step back to his computer now. So he does all his own planting on everything, does yeah, he? Yeah, he does all his own strip till planting. He's real into precision, like, loves it, absolutely loves it. We do all our own maintenance, do everything in house, yeah. engineering, mechanic, and the whole works.
Would you be fairly good now with spanners in this machine? Never had a put a spanner on her. Oh, Way out of that. Oh, <laughs> oh, I never had a put a spanner I'd on say her. that's a white lie now. <laughs> uh, she's reasonably easily looked after, to be honest. What is it now? Is it the first week of March? First week of March, yeah. Are you flat out into it now, or are you still just that, tipping? Nah, that's what's flat out now. You're at it now. Right through March, and I would say we'll go a walk into April as well. Yeah. The way the season has went, a lot of stuff was late planted. Well, then there has been a disease in some of it, which has been pretty bad. It dries it out quick. So. Is it in this stuff here today? Yeah, it's in this stuff today. That's why the machine's all black. Oh, yeah, She's yeah. normally green. She was clean this morning, was she? <laughs> she was clean this morning, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, there's a lot of leaf blight in it, and that dries the crop out quick, and then, yeah, you want to get it off as quick as you can. If you leave it too long, like it'll start affecting the cob, is it? it? Well, it'll dry out, and it goes into sawdust, then it's... You don't have the feed value in it. Some guys like it. Probably dry, can't pack it in a pit either. Can't pack it. There's no compaction in it. It's just like a sponge. And what's causing? Is this a problem every year or just? Uh, it seems to be a bigger problem this year, but a lot to do with the varieties of seed. Yeah. This is because this guy's a grower. He likes trying different types of seed. Where we're at at the minute, a sand bottom. Yeah. And he's normally like we would have this cut three weeks ago due to drought, but the seed is drought resistant or near enough it. But yeah, it doesn't leaf blade like, takes over then. So yeah, you have one or the other. You have a few Irish, a few English here at the minute. Yeah, Dolly, we're packing a Dolly mixtures. But how do them how do them people come about being here? Are you on the Facebook and all that? Aye, crap? we're on the Facebook, so we are. That'd be updated fairly regular back and forth. And that's where all the recruitment comes from? More or less, a lot of word of mouth from people who have been out here over the years. We have lads that come out this year, two lads, two English guys, and their brothers were out 10 years ago. All right. And two best mates have come out again. Yeah, yeah. And do they take on people with little experience or would you have to have, would you, you have to be professional like yourself? Oh, uh, long as you'd have a pulse. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't worry about the driving, we'll soon learn you. Like. <laughs> I wouldn't even call myself a professional, I'm still an amateur. Oh, you're at it long enough now. I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, well look, I better let me get back to work. Right, Campbell, tell us first, are you the Holmes or the Chittick in Holmes and Chittick? Well, I'm definitely not the Holmes, but I'm the Chittick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how did the company start off? How long have you been in business? We've been in business, I think this is our 23rd year, and we got offered the harvesting of the um, Paul Dad's maize, you know, back in 2000. Yeah. And that's how we started, got the opportunity to start harvesting he done about I don't know 300 odd hectares of grass at that time and now we've built it up to over 2,000 hectares of grass silage and done about 300 odd hectares of uh, maize and we've yeah. built that up to 1,200 you know so that's where we are today. Is the grass side of the business or the maize side of the business bigger? I would have to say the maize as yeah. we run three machines on the maize to do what we do as in do a fair bit of hilly stuff now, you know, and that takes time to do. But the grass, you know, we start in September and we don't finish until January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you have a long season. Yeah, yeah, so it works out quite well. Yeah. yeah, and then your main machine now is a John Deere, a 9700i behind you. Yes. So yeah. it's in, is it into its second season now? Second mage, yes, and yeah. no dramas at all. Nothing to stop it, yeah. And they're trying to entice you into a second one now today. They are, they are indeed. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of 9600 I you have out on demo? Uh, that thing goes really well. Mm. It's um, basically this with a smaller engine, yeah. but high output. They've got a good product there, as long as it, its durability holds. You have a few Irish lads. You have a few we English do. lads. Yeah, I, I did do. hear one time you had a full crew of Irish lads. We did, yeah. yeah. How, how did Irish lads come about here uh, to start? I think it started way back when, you know, staff were having trouble getting staff way back in the early 2000s and we started bringing them in, in from overseas and it's just progressed on and now we sort of, we don't really advertise overseas, it's, it's through word and mouth through people that have been with us before and, and uh, yeah, we seem to get a, not a bad pull of guys that come out. Besides the grass and maize then, what else do you do? Like I see balers in the yard, I see cultivation equipment in the yard. 
Yeah, so Paul's dad does all the cultivation and that and the baling. We we run a square baler for him because he's too busy with, with his round baling. Yeah. And then uh, in the winter we do a bit of bit of truck work, um, tractor and trailer work where needed. Uh, just R and M on gear. Uh, yeah. Like most contractors over here, you're John Deere and Fen tractors. Yeah, but I'd say we'll go more John Deere. You have nice Irish silage trailers, Heron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, good strong trailer. trailer. Yeah, good strong trailer. Pretty mobile on the hills too. Yeah, yeah with the big rubber. No, white, white axles and flotation yeah. tires. You yeah. think is, the, is yeah. the way to go around here with hilly ground? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a skillful, you know, when you're on those hills, skill. You know, getting the trailers out and getting yeah, them around yeah. and that. All right, Campbell. Thank you very much. So Matt, you're out here today with Holmes and Chiddick demoing the new 9600i John Deere. Correct. Holmes and Chiddick are currently running a 9700i. It's only about a season old. Yep. What's the big differences with this new machine? This John Deere have released their 18 litre X engine. In the previous 9700 had the Libra 24 litre. And, uh, and as of last year, John Deere released the 18 litre. We now start with the 9500 at 700 horsepower. The previous 9600i has been repositioned to 750 horsepower. And, and the, the 97 actually now is going to be running the John Deere motor as well. So this new engine is John Deere's own engine? Yeah, own engine. Uh, tier 5, no add blue. That's the big seller with this one. So it meets emission standards without having to put the def in. And even back in Europe, where we have stricter regulations around emissions. Can you run without that blue back there? I believe so, correct. So okay. she's non that blue worldwide, we'll say. Yeah, revolutionary. This is the first 96 with the new engine uh, in the country. Uh, there's a 9500 that turned up at the same time, but it's finally here. So this is day one of, of demoing in the Waikato in New Zealand. Rub the paint off, get it shiny. Yeah, shot yeah, in. yeah. And then you're on a 10 row header. Yeah, yeah. So we're running the, the John Deere 10 row, uh, big drum front, 475. So that's the exact same header as on the other. Exactly the same. So it's going to be a good comparison today. Yeah. Really uh, get down to the nitty gritty of efficiency and, and push this this new motor to the max. Uh, with that as well is the Harvest Motion Plus. So our our torque curve now with this new John Deere motor uh, is, is the peak torque is 1300 to 1450 RPM. So she's really lugging down and, and so far it's very impressive. Besides the engine then, is there any other changes to the machine? Uh, the other main big change is the spout. So the spout for, for this series model uh, has been reconfigured. So they've changed the geometry to help with, with sticky sticky crop conditions, um, sugary grass, just to, to get it flowing even better. And the John Deere then over here in New Zealand is under Brandt. So are they the sole dealer for John Deere in all New Zealand? Uh, one dealership in the North Island, yes, yep. So they're so they're running the North Island. Uh, down south, there's different dealers, but but now with the acquisition of Agriquip, uh, just recently, they've they've got the other 13 dealerships, I think it is, here in the Waikato. We've really pushed the forage harvesters uh, for for the North Island, and and with our new models, we're going to continue to do so. Would there be any John Deere choppers up here running 12 row setters? Yes, yeah, we do have a couple that are running a 12 row, yeah. 8 and 10 are the most popular. Yeah. Uh, we're fortunate today, we're in a, a fairly decent block, but um, as you will have seen around New Zealand, we get some pretty undulating ground. And So Garrett was uh, was driving this machine for the last few hours there, and he was saying the 9700i in this same field, he was doing about 5k, maybe 5.5, whereas with the new machine, he was doing about 6.5 and, and burning the same fuel. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so far, the, the throughput, I mean, as I said, this is day one um, of us really starting to to see it in, in the field working. Um, yeah, he's going slightly faster, but just how smooth the engine is is what's blowing me away. Um, yeah. You know, we really, we lug it down into that lower RPM and it, it just seems to continue pulling through. So, as I said, it's the start and we're excited to see the rest of it. Right, Matt, well, thanks for that just quick introduction on this machine and what it's doing here today. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it was a nice surprise to see you guys turn up. Right, Garrett, what's the verdict on Line 600? I love it. You love it? Absolutely love it. I really do. I don't like to say it, but I'd nearly be a step ahead of me 9.7. 
and I love it. I really do love it, but yeah, this is a game changer. So is she going better than the 97? Yeah, I know now when I get on the straight, but yeah, definitely in that last paddock this morning. She was singing another half a game of Orly. Yeah, yeah. And still not wanting to die. Like, there was more there if I wanted it. But what revs were you down to when you were uh, going through? 1300. I got down to like 1250. And I had too many people watching me, so I didn't want to block it. <laughs> but yeah, and I had a savage machine, eh? For uh, what it has to do on the size engine, that power is pumping out. Yeah, because they've gone from a 24 litre down to an 18 litre. Yeah. Twin turbo. Yeah, and it's a big turbo as well. Massive, <laughs> massive turbo. <laughs> yeah, she's pumping out power. Like. One thing about her, uh, she's going to keep the class men talking. Yep. Definitely keen to get it up against the class. So if we were to get into the technical mumbo jumbo now, then what are we doing here fuel wise? Litres per hectare, litres per hour? All that kind of stuff. Um, oh, litres and tons really are going dry tons. We're, I suppose, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 better than the 97. That's on litres per. Litres per ton. Wet ton. Dry ton. Dry ton. No odd blue consumption. Yeah, that's a big plus. Like that's, that's probably smoke. their best selling point now, yeah. to be fair. Black smoke all the time. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. She's going. Half a K to a K faster, and she's burning less fuel. Yeah. The, oh, don't get me wrong, there is a downside. What's that? She, she hasn't got twin pipes. <laughs> she's she's uh, got one pipe. Yeah. Just doesn't look as cool from Do the back. Doesn't look as cool. But that's alright, I can, you know, I'll overcome that. We've yeah, got well yeah. one on. John Deere has, uh, I think they've nailed it. Going forward. This is definitely, it's up there now, to yeah. be quite honest. I'd love to get a class, sim, you know, same horsepower, side by side, and see who comes out the top. Yeah, you're and, talking a 970 class really then, aren't you? Yeah, you would be a 970, yeah. Because it all is coming down to fuel, it's coming down to running costs. And maintenance is another thing, you know, cost, depreciation. And parts availability. Parts availability is a big thing. That's a big issue out here, like. That's a big thing. It's not like at home, like, you can oh, get something get some overnight from Germany. Yeah. Out here, it's, it's a couple of weeks, it's like. It's a couple of weeks, yeah. That uh, would be a downside out here. And the other thing is the shipping of everything. It just drives it into mental money. And t uh, lo long lead times as well, I suppose. Yeah, long lead times, like. So, say we want a harvester for next year. For next grass, well, it would have to be ordered now. Yeah. And you wouldn't get it till September. So. You just have the best machine in the world, but if a fella's gonna have to wait 18 months for it, yeah. and then if you don't have all the parts on the shelf for it, it's yep. a waste of time, really, isn't it? Hi, sure, we're doing it for the love of it at the end of the It's day, all for really. the crack. Yeah. Come here, do you reckon there'll be a loader change before this 960 be changed, though? Like, I you could do with a nice yeah. new 435 Red S now, or. I would. Dare I say a 457? <sighs> The Look at it there yesterday, you were running the two 434, no, 434 four. and an old shape 435 yeah. on the stack. If you had a 457 now, you'd just one machine would be finished. And the two men fighting over. Yeah, That'd that's what you want. Thing. Well, that's true. They'd drive it for nothing. They would. To the, be fair. Just to say they're driving yeah. one, to get the Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd do it myself if I like driving loaders. Love them to probably change a loader. Yeah. It would be a good thing to upgrade. Yeah, what? Is there features in this that you don't have? You have the row finder anyway. Uh, there's row finder in this head I don't have. Uh, other than that, the spout's different in this. It's more streamlined. And it does look cool now, a big black stripe of it. I'd say it's hardly for aerodynamics anyway. Yeah, well, probably, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that engine on that no wad blue. Other than that, I don't think there's any more differences. From um, an operator's point of view, you're impressed. You oh, like it. Oh, yeah, definitely. You're, I think they've nailed it. Like, she's still all there, like. She's still all there, very lively. Like, there's six, just over 6k at 1400 revs, like. Yeah. And we're in 23 tonne the Hector crop. Bring any class here and we'll see how that goes. Hey, we have the weather on our side and I'm going to go down time, sure. Tell Donkey back home that you're a man after his own heart. Aye! 
Ah, you should have Because we man. all know what a John Deere fanboy he is. Oh, he'll be he'll be bull and jealous now. Savage. Oh. Right, Garrett, good man. Sound for that? Yep, no problem. Thanks for coming. <laughs>